Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Kim. With it here, I'm 19 years old, and thank you very much for having got up so early to be here in a chilly weekend morning. Uh, today, I'm gonna talk about the most extraordinary step of mine, which I took last year. In February last year, after spending a lovely Tet holiday with my family in my hometown, I went back to Ho Chi Minh City with my work and my study. Full of things and full of certainty that 2020 was going to be my year. I'm gonna excel at my study. I'm gonna meet the coolest people. I'm gonna produce a lot of good content for my YouTube and blogs every week. I'm gonna make money and and we all know what happened next. Not so long after, COVID-19 drove the world crazy and Ho Chi Minh City went into a complete lockdown with no end in sight. My university, after delaying the commencement date of the new semester by two weeks, decided that for the first time ever in history, all the teaching and learning activities would be carried out online. From an outgoing person that would be on the road most of the time, I was then having to spend 23 hours and 15 minutes inside my house. Guess what I did in that remaining 10 minutes outdoor? Disposing garbage and collecting all deliveries. Uh, useless and full of self hatred That was how I felt during that lockdown. All our, my attention span was better and my creativity was completely dampened. So I found it comp impossible to focus on my study and I could not absorb any piece of knowledge from online learning and could not produce any new content for my YouTube. All I remember doing was just lazing around and scrolling through Facebook and Instagram and TikTok with no intention in mind. I hate myself because I was not making any progress in my study, my work, or personal development. I felt bad about feeling bad. It wasn't okay to not feel okay. And I just miss my family, my friends, and my vibrant life before this disaster. At one point, I gave in to those feelings and burst into crying for 20 minutes straight why we calling my best friend who was also in lockdown in Canada. Turned out I wasn't the only victim. My friend was also in serious stress as well. And even in my darkest days, I still remember to take this precious screenshot because I know one day I'm going to be talking about this one. Uh, so in my friend was in lockdown in Canada and she felt a sense of guilty because she could not continue her part-time job and neither could she focus on her study. Ac according to UNICEF, in 2019, from 8 to 29% of teenagers in Vietnam have problems with their mental health. Other research suggested that there are at least 3 million Vietnamese teenagers facing mental health issues, which is alarming. And the most commonly reported reason is pressure. We, the Gen Z, constantly attack by all sorts of external and internal pressure every second we leave. It might be our parents who force us to graduate with honor, to find a well-paid job. It might be our exceptional friends who just thinking about their achievements can make us feel so small or it might be the media, has been manipulating us into believing and thinking that we must acquire some certain achievements by a certain age in order to be considered successful and happy. I remember coming across this article while surfing the internet. It says, while you are busy chit-chatting online, these girls have bought their cars and apartments. Wow, imagine feeling ashamed and having to question your self-worth after coming across a random article written by someone you don't know. 
about someone you don't know, as if happiness and success were something one size fit all and could only be calculated by an apartment, a car, and can only be defined by a certain group of people. Globalization, the media, technological advancements, economic developments, and social movements have all contributed to make Gen Z an unprecedentedly open and receptive generation. And with openness and receptiveness come vulnerabilities. The more external factors we come into contact with, the more we need to be selective and to add more filters into our life to decide what, what and who can have a real impact on our life and how we should approach them. In the past, it was the heinous war, the restricted socioeconomic background, the harsh living condition that deprived our grandparents or even our parents the right to live their lives to their own expectations. We, the Gen Z, by contrast, are so privileged. Thanks to the love, the effort, the hard work, the sacrifice of our parents, we could go to piano classes, we could take English courses, and we have all sorts of technology and facilities available at our fingertips. We're probably the most privileged generation that our country has produced to date. And because we're so endowed with so many privileges compared to our previous generation, we are constantly under the pressure not only succeed, but to also achieve more than what our parents and grandparents did. I bet we, uh, I bet we all, uh, there seems to be no valid reason for us to not succeed. And if we fail, who and what are we going to blame except for ourselves, right? We all want to be that person who can speak three languages fluently, play at least one musical instrument, fashionable, take savvy, mm, has a sense of humor, make a lot of friends, and still r maintain a 4.0 GPA at school and still have time for family. We push ourselves to become that perfect creature. Despite how well we know, it's never going to happen. Or maybe it will. You or me might become that person one day. But that one day is not tomorrow, not next week or next month. It takes time and we have limits. But so often we forget that we do because we are so used to being in the red race where people could go to any lengths just to move forward, just to make extraordinary steps. Sometimes all we need to do is just slow down and listen to the energy and the voices within and without. Try listening to yourself. Figure out what you want at the moment. Set priorities. And do not hesitate to communicate your pressure with your loved ones. Bear in mind that failures are inevitable. And what matters is how you harness your energy and approach and accept the failures. W once you've come to realize that there is always a, a lesson to be grabbed from any experience or incident in life, no matter how positive or negative, you will no longer foster that un unhealthy pressure to be perfect. I'm not flexing, I'm not boasting, I'm not bragging about anything. I'm just trying to emphasize how much one or seemingly period of stagnancy or a short rest, you may call it, could do to your mental health and your productivity. I help myself a lot by just listening to and g gave myself a short break. The most extraordinary step I have taken so far is th that bike. And next time you feel like you may need to rest or step back, don't panic. Just take it in. Because one famous leader once said, 
it is necessary sometimes to step back in order to take two steps forward. Thank you for your listening.